fixed income indices have not evolved as creatively as equities. But there is space for change. Agib Jaya, head of fixed income and currencies at BCV, has joined us today to discuss some new intelligent bond indices. Agib, good afternoon. Thank you for inviting me. Traditional bond indices are all market cap based, but there are some new initiatives to weigh them differently. Can you tell us a little bit about what initiatives there are, why and why, what are the results? Yes, uh, before I delve on this initiative, let me roll just one step back and explain a little bit the, the current indices that are market cap indices. Actually, those type of indices are based on price. And all this buying and selling activities that happens daily in a bond market is reflected in those price and is reflected in the market cap indices. All this information about yield, about accounting, about different statistics for companies and countries is manifested in the bond prices. So as far as it looks simple that it takes only one element, the bond price, actually incorporate a lot of information that is in the price. Although we have a problem in current in uh, fixed income space, which is known since uh, since 90s, which is named BAMS problem. And what is this uh, this problem actually, which is manifested in indices? This has to do that more a country issue debt, more is the weight of this country in the index, and more you issue debt, you cannot say always that is for the health of the country that you improve the quality of the debt of this country. And just to make an example here, we have the case of uh, Japanese government bonds, which based on this market cap indices represent around 30% of this universe. So if someone will follow market capitalization based indices on treasury, it will have an exposure of 30% in Japanese bond, around 25% in US treasury. So around 55% of the universe will be at the current date with a yield of 0.8%. This is a statu quo of market cap indices. To deal with this problem of market cap, there are a couple of initiatives which has begun a couple of years before. A little bit, let's put in perspective with equities, a little bit late compared with the world of equities. And this was for two reasons because a lot of research have been taken place in equities, which analyze a little bit risk factors like value, momentum, other factors, while in the world of fixed income, the characteristics of fixed income market has not been at the same pace as equity market. The second factor, which is important, is the last 10 years before the crisis in euro sovereigns, we have not had many crises. So those two factors brought a little bit that this research on fixed income indices has come a little bit uh, with delay. This new analysis, these new indicators, what are they and how do they impact the weight of different countries or regions? There is some important research produced in uh, this area to include new indicators to add to produce alternative ways for uh, indices, especially in sovereign area. And what type of those indicators they are using? They begin to analyze the country capacity to absorb DELP. You go with uh, fundamentals variables like GDP weights, you go with uh, population weight, you go with uh, country, uh, country weight, country land area, you go with energy consumption weight. And based on that, you score all the countries of the world and then based on this, you rank what is the capacity of the debt for those countries. And as we can see here, in all the emerging markets, for example, today weight is 10% compared to 90% for all these developed. If we'll apply bluntly this type of approach, we'll see that we can, the country capacity to absorb debt will be at around 60% compared to 10% previously. So six times more That's debt. A very Big difference. W what is the company that runs this kind of research? There are there are a couple of uh, there are a couple of companies. We have a research affiliate which has joined with uh, City to produce City Rafi indexes. We have Barclay, which is uh, pretty well known in this uh, world of indices. They have come with two approaches, like Barclay GDP weighted uh, benchmark. They have another one, the more developed, more refined, with more fundamental variables, which is Barclay fiscal strength indices, but those are the, the two main houses 
which have produced this uh, type of research. There are other initiatives, of course, from other players. And the yields are quite different too, as uh, this graphic shows us. Yes, as we as we mentioned as we mentioned previously, the, the main the main issue, this bumps problem that we have in uh, fixed income, is that country like Japan, which has thirty percent of weights, have a yield of zero point six zero sixty five, while compared to the other part of commodity blocks, like like we have the countries like Australia, New Zealand, Norwegian, Canada, there the weight on those type of new approaches is around 25%. So it's pretty big change in yields too because yield in this country is around uh, much higher because of this curry currency effect that we have has a yield of 234. But the performance of these uh, re-weighted indices is at first sight much better. It's nearly 125 basis points over the traditional indices. Um, is that is that all there is to say? Is that conclusive? You are, you are correct in the first statement. If you will run those indices, although RAF indices with, together with Citi has begun to run in the last couple of years, if you will do, we'll take some backtest data and we'll run since 2001. If you see in US dollar, those indices has produced around 100, 125 basis points more than current indices that we have. But if we'll dig more on the results, if we'll try to see the effect of currency and the effect of yields, if we'll run this in a hedge format, as we use this terminology in fixed income, we'll see that the differences between them are very minor. In, in other words, in dollars, there is not a much, much difference. Is that what you're saying? In dollar is not much difference. And uh, we understand from the discussion that we had, from the decomposition of those indices, that they have a pretty large weight in commodity-based uh, commodity countries. And they switch this from Japan to commodity-based countries. And we know the performance in the last 10 years of commodity currencies. This explains part of this effect. I understand. Thank you very much again for coming and explaining these uh, rather difficult issues to us. It was my pleasure. Thank you.